Well, welcome back, folks, to the front porch here in New Caney. I uh, wanted this view. Beta's coming in, tropical storm, depression, whatever they're calling it this minute. Uh, I say it's coming in. The very outer bands, a little bit of sprinkling going on. And I wanted to be outside and reading, so here I am. And, uh, hope that works for you. It might be a little traffic come by, but it shouldn't be too bad. So we're in Matthew chapter 9, and I'm going to take off from right there. I'm not a pastor, a preacher, a minister. I'm not an evangelist. I'm not a missionary. What I am is a believer in Jesus Christ. Amen. And I sure hope you are too. Amen. Excuse me. Here we go. Chapter 9. And he entered into a ship and passed over and came into his own city. And behold, they brought to him a man sick of the palsy, lying on a bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, be of good cheer. Thy sins be forgiven thee. And behold, Certain of the scribes said within themselves, This man blasphemeth. And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Wherefore think ye evil in your hearts? For whether it is easier to say, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise and walk? Which one do you think is easier? You're forgiven for your sins, or arise and walk? Verse 6, but that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. He's trying to teach him that he can forgive sins. Then saith he to the sick of the palsy, Arise, take up thy bed, and go unto thine house. And he arose and departed to his house. Hallelujah. Verse 8, but when the multitude saw it, they marveled and glorified God. Wouldn't you know? which had given such power unto men. Verse 9, And as Jesus passed forth from thence, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the receipt of custom, and he saith unto him, Follow me. And he arose and followed him. Verse 10, And it came to pass, as Jesus sat at meat in the house, behold, many publicans and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto his disciples, Why eateth your master with publicans and sinners? But when Jesus heard that, he said unto them, Here comes a lesson, I'll bet you. They that behold need not a physician, but, that they, but they that are sick. But go ye and learn what that meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice, for I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Makes perfect sense to me. They're calling him, they're calling Jesus out. Why are you sitting here having dinner with, with, with sinners and publicans? Jesus said, well, that's who I'm here to say. The sinners, publicans, the righteous are the righteous. That's what I'm reading in it. Now he says, he said, it, it, the, the doctors work on well people or sick people. Then he tells them, but go ye and learn what that meaneth. Wow. Verse 14, Then came to him the disciples of John, saying, Why do we and the Pharisees fast oft, as in often, but thy disciples fast not? Sounds like they're worried about something they don't need to worry about to me, because what I've read so far in this book in different places, Quit worrying about everybody else. Worry about yourself. Amen. That's good advice. And Jesus said unto them, Can the children of the bride chamber mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridgegroom... Excuse me, bridgegroom. Listen to me. Verse 15. And Jesus said unto them, Can the children of the bride chamber mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken from them, and then shall they fast. No man putteth a piece of new cloth unto an old garment, for that which is put in to fill it up taketh from the garment. That's a long sentence. Verse 16, No man putteth a piece of new cloth unto an old garment, for that which is put in to fill it up taketh from the garment, and the rent is made worse. Neither do men put new wine into old bottles, else the bottles break and the wine runneth out, and the bottles perish. But they put new wine into new bottles, and both are preserved. Verse 18, While he spake, 
These things, while he spake these things unto them, behold, there came a certain ruler and worshipped him, saying, My daughter is even now dead, but come and lay thy hand upon her, and she shall live. And Jesus arose and followed him, and so did his disciples. And behold, a woman which was diseased, which was diseased with an issue of blood twelve years, came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. For she said within herself, If I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. But Jesus turned him about, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort, thy faith hath made thee whole. Thy faith hath made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from that hour. Amen. Verse 23, And when Jesus came into the ruler's house, and saw the minstrels and the people making a noise, he saith unto them, Give place, for the maid is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn. But when the people were put forth, he went in, and took her by the hand, and the maid arose. And the fame hereof went abroad into all that land. And when Jesus departed thence, two blind men followed him, crying and saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. And when he was come into the house, the blind man came to him, and Jesus saith unto them, Believe ye that I am able to do this? That's a question. He's asking them. He's asking the blind man, Do you believe I can do it? They said unto him, Yea, Lord. Verse 29. Then touched he their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. There it is again. According to your faith. It's faith doing it. It's faith doing it. Faith in Jesus. Verse 30. And their eyes were opened, and Jesus straightly charged them, saying, See that no man know it. But they, when they were departed, spread abroad his fame in all that country. As they went out, behold, they brought to him a dumb man, possessed with a devil. And when the devil was cast out, the dumb spake, and the multitudes marveled, saying, It was never so seen in Israel. But the Pharisees said, He casteth out devils through the prince of the devils. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Then saith he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers in the harvest. I think I have some understanding on this one. It kind of switches up as talking about harvest, but if you go back to verse 36, but when he saw the multitudes, but when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep, having no shepherd like a pastor. Then saith he unto his disciples, The harvest truly, truly is plenteous. The forgiveness, the peace, the being saved, Jesus Christ the Lord, is plenteous. But the labor spread, the laborers, the pastors, the preachers, the ministers, the evangelists, the missionaries, the ones spreading the word uh, is what I'm thinking he's talking about are few at, at the time. And he's saying, pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into the harvest. And uh, the church I belong to, East River Baptist Church in New Caney, uh, supports a lot of missionaries across the world. One day I want to dive in and, uh, and see the list and get my hands on it, kind of wrap my head around more about just how much uh, this little old church in New Caney, Texas it is able to do spread out how far around the world and whatnot. I don't want to have a better understanding on that, but I can tell you it's a lot. I, I know enough to know that. Amen. So thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. If you feel the, if you, if you feel like it, please by by all means you 
you can certainly share this video or share the channel on your social media. If you haven't yet subscribed, please do so. Um, I'm throwing these in videos right now. I think they have the ducks quacking and the nice little lake view. But you'll see an icon circle with me. If you click that, you can subscribe. I'll also put the circle up there with the three crosses. That's the East River Baptist Church channel. If you click that, it'll take you straight to the church's channel. And then I randomly throw up a, a, a thumbnail link that will uh, take you to the, you know, one of the playlists on, on the channel here. So I don't know if anybody's been able to make use of those things, but uh, they're there and uh, they're, they're for you. So thanks for being here and we'll see you tomorrow on the next one there, chapter 10. Amen.